begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! That terror begins again. That's right, baby. If you didn't see uh, yesterday's show on YouTube, there's a reason. I put it over on BitChute. Because if I would have put it on YouTube, they would have yanked it down right away. I was doing some rebuttals to a couple subscribers who were kind of a little upset about uh, how I talked about the Black Panther Party. Or the new Black Panther Party. Uh... They were putting facts down that was from the old one, didn't distinguish between the new one, all that jive. So yes, I put it over on BitChute. I'll put the link in the description box if you want to check it out. It did air on Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff because those platforms, they don't censor. But you got to go check it out, man. Uh, You've probably seen these uh, schlucks in my uh, comment sections going off about it. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to be mean, but if you're going to try to throw something up, at least have all the facts. You had one person uh, quoting uh, a manifesto from the 60s and then trying to compare it to uh, modern day uh, party. It, you know, I was like, come on, really, guys, if you're going to come at me, at least come at me with some freaking facts that are correct. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs is what I have to say. But uh, everybody's been enjoying them uh, stand-along uh, video blogs that I've been doing. Uh, yes, you have them coming at you almost every day. You know, when I can get the time to get it done, I will get them done. Everybody was going off about that uh, incident uh, at the gas station. This freaking broad just slapped the hell out of him. And, I, and he just stood there. I was like, what? What happened here? What did I just see? <laughs> And he does nothing back. You know, we do have mixed, uh, you know, reviews of what people would have done. Some would have made her walk and others wouldn't have done nothing because their mommy told them never to hit somebody and blah, blah, blah. Which, hey, man, each your own. If you want to look like a schmuck and you want to get slapped by a lady, uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. (laughs) The biker scene's a man's world and there's a lot that goes into it and a lot of people... You know, they look at respect real big, and that's being disrespectful for an old lady just to slap you out of the side of the head. You sit there, look at me like a sad puppy, and it's like, wow, that's all I have to say. Anyway, that was in the uh, video blog, uh, Biker Scene, It's a Man's World, something like that, something like that. But more of those videos will be coming along. Got a lot of news today. Uh, sad stuff, man, out of New Jersey sad stuff and uh also got the indians new lineup baby it's looking freaking awesome i gotta say man harley davidson you better be shaking in your boots the only thing indian doesn't have on you is your dealer network that hurt it in the past but that hurt it because they didn't have polaris Polaris, oh my goodness gracious, do they got a dealer network if they want. They got the money to back it up. They're huge, man. And Harley being led by uh, somebody that's not USA born. uh, (laughs) Gonna be tough uh, state of affairs, man, I'm telling you. Don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China, Dow, man. We just got done uh, talking about uh, the 10 most... uh, Famous serial killers. It's such a show over there. Uh, we get a lot of people that's over on this channel go over there. And they just love it, man. The chat's awesome. We cover all types of topics, man. All types of topics. And it's really cool seeing people opening up on the topics that we do cover. Some, you know, topics are, you know, real out there as far as, you know, sex life. And then we do some very serious topics. So we mix it up a lot. To try to give you a good radio show. 
you know, I've been hearing, hey, you know, we're taking that one to work with us too. Not only your uh, biker one, but we take the other one with the Listen to China Doll. It's like, okay, cool, man. Rock and roll. So don't forget to subscribe over there. Help us get the numbers up a little bit. Uh, the numbers on the radio. You know what? That's why I love radio. I do. I love freaking iTunes. I love Spotify. Is because boom, the numbers just shoot rocket up on that stuff, man. Uh, that's why my main platform uh, for the motorcycle madhouse show is over there, and that's why you see me on camera all the time in the studio. It's because we're a radio deal, <laughs> but this gives you an opportunity to go ahead and uh, see how the show is being recorded and stuff behind the scenes. One thing that has really been in the news the last couple days, and I want to talk about it, is the Proud Boys. You have the media going crazy. The only left are always crazy. Because Trump said to stand by, stand back, and the Proud Boys are being called white supremacists. That's how crazy the left really is do you guys know who runs that it's a latino in miami they have african americans in that group they have latinos in that group they have all ethnic backgrounds in that group but they'll go after them as white supremacists come on man enough's enough the meat and i even said it on our other show with uh the serial killer stuff they're part they are the problem in this country you're listening to all these people who went to college listen to these freaking commie professors they're not reporting straight up no they're putting their viewpoints out there and this whole country's went to a mess now how did that have to do with the serial killers well they give them these names the media and the next thing you know they're doing it more and more and more. Then you got the ADL coming out and uh, listing the Proud Boys as a hate group. You know what? That's why nobody gives a crap about the ADL. And it's actually a freaking joke. It's a joke. List them out as a white supremacist gang. Come on, man. How are you doing that if a Latino's leading the damn thing right now? The guy who founded it ain't leading it. He stepped down. It's all coming out of Miami. No, you do not. Oh, Antifa, that's an ideology. Get the hell out of here, man. An ideology don't run around with black little robes on. You're sick, man. And what's even sicker is you have all these minions, all these sheeple that follow the media. Like everything's true coming out of them. That is why we have a country we do. What's worse is it spills over into the biker scene. You know, one thing I learned doing these standalone uh, video blogs is just how bad everything has really gotten. Some of the stuff, and you know what? I'll watch the comments and I try to respond to everyone, even if it's a word or two. I see some really screwed up stuff from people claiming to be bikers or even motorcycle enthusiasts. It's like, where the hell did everything go wrong? And I'm going to tell you where it went wrong during 94. That was the year that everything started getting screwed up because you had these middle-aged idiots coming and getting their first bike and the story is old as freaking time now within the scene and then they started acting uh, like there's something they're not and they started to bring uh, these freaking ideals of what it's supposed to be like I'm sorry to say man and you know what? I know there's different subsections of uh, the scene. But I hate to say that it was the dirty old scooter tramp that made it freaking cool to be something like this, man. To live the life. All you did was try to... All you did was piggyback off of that. But you brought in your stupid ideology. 
your stupid way of acting, and everything has been watered down. That's just like I've heard it over and over again because I've talked to some of the members. Even the big one percenter clubs, some of them are thinking about taking the diamond off. Why? Because it's been watered down by these freaking morons. How can you just slap a 1% diamond on yourself and go around calling yourself a 1%er club if you've never been in one? If you have no experience in one? But you sure the hell run when you uh, get confronted, don't you? Because people say they have a constitutional right to do so. Well, that constitution really don't work out when so, you know push comes to shove, does it? But that's the ideology that is coming to the scene. They don't respect anything that the older guys have put in for them. It's funny, I'll hear people saying, well, this is a different time and na na da da You know what? The basic foundations of what being a biker is never's changed. Never. It's just got watered down. There is still a lot of hardcore people out there that live this life every single day. 24-7, 365 a year, man. Still living hardcore. And those are the ones that these idiots look down on. Well... They must not know their damn history too damn well, now do they? It was them scooter tramps that paved the freaking way. The ones who do live this 24-7. It's a part of their identity. And you wonder why there's such a freaking rift between everybody. Shit. You can see it in the comment sections of the platforms. Just how bad it really is. I wonder, I, I'll ask my subscribers, do you actually ever go through the comments and see some of the comments that are like v right out there, man, in outer space or something, man, just like the idiots that wrote them? If you sit back and you actually look at them, you think to yourself, my God, what is happening? You, you know what? I always talk about that line. Bikers never cross that line. Now you have bikers over there joining cop clubs. And why do you have people joining cop clubs? Because they're too scared to go the regular way. That's why. Or they make these clubs up and then join an association with cops. That's how weak everything has become. Nobody talks straight out anymore. That video where I said, you know what, a woman smacks you, you better smack the hell out of her. You got people coming up, oh, I was taught this and I was taught that. I'd never do that. But you'd rather sit there and look like a punk? Yeah, I guess things have really changed if uh, you got bikers out there wanting to look like a punk. That's exactly like it is. So one thing that you do not know when you're slapped, there is no longer any gender there. You were just slapped. Do something about it. Sure the hell ain't gonna let nobody sit there scream and yell at me. And it, Maybe he should have been on the back of the bike and, and her riding. I don't know, man. But yeah, I got some help for that one. The emails, it was funny. I go through these. Some of these days, I'm gonna have to try to get the screen up. Where I can show you all the emails. It's funny shit, man. You know what? I call it my comedy hour. Because I'll sit for an hour. Go through the emails right back. It's my comedy hour. And a lot of these people. You can see. They're freaking hardcore rubs, man. Hardcore freaking rubs. They come at, they come at a lot of this stuff I talk about. As. How can I say? The white middle class, I guess. Or the upper middle class, or somebody, you know, doctors, lawyers, whatever, man. That's how they come at you with that type of thinking. 
They don't know what this lifestyle is all about. All they know is they're going to put their tra your bike on your trailer and take it to Sturges and act and party like they something they not. That's the angle they come at me with. And I always laugh, man, because I do. I hurt their balls, don't. Oh, my God. When I t give them something back, they don't know how to respond. That's because you're a freaking wuss and you're a freaking fake. That's why it's so easy to hit you. Because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. So, that is my monologue for today. We're going to go and get to some uh, biker news right now. Hey guys, Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. That's out of New Jersey. Motorcycle Club Bra at a Lakeside Diner turns deadly after 70-year-old assault victim dead at Trauma Hospital. 78 years old somebody went after. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted is what I have to say at that. 78 years old. And the roar of the shore was canceled. And I'm not saying this is where it took place. But they were saying the gang stuff, the gang stuff is going to happen. Why do we have to prove them fucking right? Seriously, come on. Lacey Township. A brawl that took place at the Lakeside Diner in Lacey Township during the weekly Wednesday night. Biker night event has turned deadly after a victim who was rushed to New Jersey Shore Medical Center has died. They canceled that, and I'm, these are two different events, but I'm just saying. They canceled it because, oh, it's the gangs, it's the gangs, uh, and then this happens. Ocean County Prosecutor Bradley D. Billheimer announced that Edward Chandler, 54, was charged with aggravated assault in violation of uh, NJSA 2C12-1B1 relative to an incident which occurred outside the Lakeside Diner in Lacey Township. During the evening hours of September 30th. At this time, no charges for murder or manslaughter has been filed. So he was 54. The victim was uh, 78. Uh, and here's the statement from the report here. On September 30th, approximately 7.30, Lacey Township Police received the 911 call in reference to a male who was reported to be unresponsive at the Lakeside Diner on Lacey Road. Responding officers found Robert Clark, 78, yes, 78, a whiting, unconscious and bleeding from an apparent head wound. Clark was airlifted to Jersey Shore Medical Center. Clark succumbed at approximately 1.30 a.m. and was pronounced deceased at the hospital. An investigation by the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, Major Crime Unit, Lacey Township Police Department, and Ocean uh, County Sheriff's Office crime scene investigation revealed that an argument had taken place inside the diner between members of a motorcycle club. The owner of the diner asked everyone involved in the altercation to leave the premises. A second argument involving the same parties arose in the parking lot. During this argument, Chandler uh, struck Mr. Clark with a closed fist, causing the victim to fall to the ground, resulting in severe head trauma. Chandler was taken into custody and transported to the Ocean County Jail, where he is currently logged pending a detention hearing. Quote, This is an active and ongoing investigation with we are continuing to interview potential witnesses and are awaiting the results of Mr. Clark's post-mortem examination by Ocean County. I fully expect that additional charges will be forthcoming. 
Prosecutor Bill Heimer acknowledges the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office Major Crime Unit, Lacey Township Police, and Ocean County Sheriff's Office Crime Investigation Unit for their collaborative assistance. Uh, they're not releasing the details of the clubs involved. But yeah, 78 years old, man, and had to deal with motorcycle clubs. Unfreaking believable. That's what I have to say. Uh, let's see here. We got a little update on that incident out of the Waterloo Club's uh, shooting. Uh, that We covered it, and they didn't give the club names, but uh, we're kind of figuring out uh, stuff right now. Man who died in Waterloo Club shooting survived June shooting tied to separate after hours club. Oh, my gosh. Goodness gracious. Months uh, before he was shot and killed at an unlicensed private club early Saturday, Doc Curious D. Burkett was shot and injured outside an unlicensed after hours club. Burkett, 22, died last weekend of injuries when gunfire broke out during a birthday party inside the Motorcycle Club hangout at 501 West 4th Street. The sh uh, Saturday shooting also claimed the life of Takika M. Hogan Camp, 28, of West Des Moines, and left six others with bullet wounds. You know, sad stuff, man. Sad state of affairs. No arrests have been made in the shooting, and police continue to investigate. Police records show that Burkett was one of several people injured in a string of shootings over the span of two summer weekends. Violence, police said, was connected to parties at a former auto body shop at 114 Edward Street. Burkett showed up at Unity Point Allen Hospital emergency room with a gunshot wound at about 11.50 p.m. They tracked the shooting to the area of Edward Street in Logan, he wouldn't be the only person to be injured by gunfire in that area. Hours later, at 3.47 a.m., a 27-year-old a man showed up at the emergency room with a bullet wound from a stat shooting in the 100 block of Edwards. Then, following the weekend, someone outside the Edwards Street building began shooting at around 4.50 a.m. One of the bullets found its way inside and struck a 27-year-old woman. Oh, man. She was flown to University of Iowa Hospital and clinics in Iowa City for treatment and ultimately survived. Good stuff here. The police cited the building's owners for after-hours violations and a trial is pending. No one has been arrested in this. And uh, right now, just looking at a live shot of the police and where the place was, tattoo grills, all that good stuff. So that's where it happened. Uh, police on Wednesday also released the names of six others who say they saw treatment. 28, 22, 31, 21, 28, 24. My God. Just kids. Just kids. Anyway, that's the update on that uh, shooting that happened in Waterloo. Now, oh my God, man. Indian Motorcycle, baby. They just released their lineup come in the 2021 uh, Indian Motorcycle has unveiled its entire 21 uh, lineup to the public. The announcement comes on the heels of the brand's strongest motorcycle sales quarter ever. I'm going to underline that. The strongest motorcycle sales quarter ever. Compared to Harley, not so good. Considering the pandemic, business is looking good. Quite the opposite. Its main rival, Harley-Davidson, is yet to reveal its 2021 20, uh, motorcycle range. And according to the Milwaukee Business Journal, Indian September rollout gives them a months-long head start in marketing its heavyweight 2021 models for the next riding season. And boy, do they look nice. You got to come over on the radio, man, and check this out on YouTube. They look hot. I gotta admit, man, Indians engineers, they killing it, baby, killing it. They talk about the, uh, the different business strategy. Harley is presently under the leadership of its new CEO, you know, the one I call Al Bundy because he's a previous uh, shoe salesman, 
Zietz is purpose, uh, uh, purposefully delaying Harley's new uh, model year introductions into the early portion of 2021. That don't make no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense at all, but hey, I'm not your CEO freaking Al Bundy. As such, the public won't be getting much more information on Harley's models until the calendar reads 2021. That does not mean that Harley will not provide any information. It just means that there will only be hints about what Harley has up its sleeve. Probably nothing. For example, Harley confirmed to the Milwaukee Business Journal that its new Pan America Adventure motorcycle would arrive sometime in 2021. If you go to Adam Sandoval's channel and he's talking about the Pan America and because he's uh, dabbling in that sport, the off-road sport, there's a lot, of, a lot of young guys who are in that sport that are hardcore that have nothing the good to say about Harley Davidson. You know, the African twin is uh, running number one. Uh, while also verifying the company's naked uh, Bronx Street Fighter will not. As is well known, Harley is in the midst of a business process revolution codenamed the Hardwire. Zeet says the brand needs to concentrate on its core customers who purchase heavyweight cruisers. What this doesn't say is that he wants the, the upper end core customers that go for the CVO uh, styles. To do this, he has trimmed uh, the motor company's workforce, reduced the number of model variants extensively, and pulled back on production and new product development. So while Harley restructures its business, its main competition is out drumming up sales and showcasing its models. But does the rollout of Indian's 21 uh, model information really give them a leg up on the, uh, as the Milwaukee Business Journal suggests? And they answer yes! Releasing Indian's 2021 lineup gives them a chance to build some buzz and perhaps offer a few more test rides. But is it a significant advantage, especially in a market uh, where the product is seasonal, they asked? What do you think? Should Harley-Davidson at least roll out some of its existing lineup, or should it keep its cards close? Indy's just going to destroy them. They get that dealer network better. Oh, my God, they're just going to kill Harley-Davidson. You know, I think the best thing that ever happened to the Indian name was Polaris taking it over. Now, let's go over to... What is this? Uh... Pan Yan Man, try to say that one, sentence on a weapons charge. Yeah, we covered this a long time ago. Uh, the case of a local man hoping to hitch a ride to a Native American religious ceremony, but instead busted after a high-speed case has been resolved. Yates County District Attorney Todd Casella and Charles Buchanan was sentenced Tuesday in county court to six months in jail and five years of probation. Buchanan pleaded guilty to a felony weapons charges. Casella said Buchanan got credit for time already served in jail following his January arrest, so he's now free. The charge stems from an incident that started during the early morning hours of January 2nd when Pan Yen police saw a vehicle leaving a suspected drug location. When authorities tried to stop the uninspected uh, vehicle, the driver, Bradley Zadu of Niagara Falls, led them on a high-speed chase. Penn Yan Police uh, Chief Tom Durham said officers pursued Zadal through the village into Benin, where he drove through a farmer's field and electric fence. The vehicle hit a barn before going into the ditch. Durham and Casella said Zabal, Owen, and Buchanan apparently were planning to attend a Native American religious ceremony uh, in southwestern New York. Durham said uh, Zabal tried to run away but was tasered by a sheriff's deputy. He was taken into custody, as was his girlfriend, Jessica Owen. While frisking him, Durham said uh, police found a loaded gun in his waistband and a large knife. Don't you think while you're running you want to dump that? Just saying, you know, that, that's just saying. Police later found a sawed-off shotgun in the vehicle. The weapon's uh, serial number had been defaced. 
Police impounded the vehicle and found another gun, numerous bag of marijuana seeds. Man, would I love to get my hands on some marijuana seeds. Uh, yeah, just saying. More than 1100 in cash, uh, bad, uh, baton, knives, and drugs. Uh, Durham said uh, Duel appeared to be a member of the Kingsman Motorcycle Club, which federal officials have called a criminal organization engaged in such crimes as distribution of drugs, sale of weapons, and promoting prostitution. Yeah, the feds freaking say everybody's a gang. Anyway, Corey Graff! Wall of Shame, and that one that we did yesterday was a whole show dedicated to the choreograph Wall of Shame over there on BitChute. Go check it out. Harris police officer arrested on domestic violence charges. No! It can't be. Accused of assaulting wife. Frank Corvino, 36, was charged with third degree assault and endangering the welfare of a child. Both misdemeanors as well as second-degree harassment of violation via video conference in Harrison Town Court, the Westchester County District Attorney Office said uh, prosecutors alleged that Corvino assaulted his wife and injured her in front of their child on September 27th. His wife had bruises on her face, arms, and legs and received medical treatment for injuries to her ribs and shoulders. There's the pick of the muck! Uh, orders of protection were issued for the victims. Corvino pleaded not guilty and was released on his own recognizance. That's because he's a cop. Yep, that ain't going to end well. I can already see it. Uh, let's go over here to Columbus police officer arrested on, guess what? Child pornography charges. Well, that ain't a surprise, is it? A Columbus police officer was arrested and charged uh, for allegations of child pornography. Uh, officer Raymond Rouse was illegal use of minor and nudity oriented uh, material and pandering obscenity involving a minor. According to the city, the investigation began after a family member of the alleged victim contacted Internal Affairs Bureau. Roves was placed on a paid administrative leave during the investigation, meaning he has will have no arrest powers and no firearm. Well, thank God for that. Well, when criminal activity is discovered, our duty is to investigate and pursue the appropriate action based on the evidence, said Columbus Police Chief Tom Quillen in a written statement. The fact that it involves one of our own does not change that. Well, there you go. And uh, on that video yesterday on the segment, again, I keep on saying video, but as our segment, uh, we had a story from a former police chief on saying why it's so hard to get rid of these people. You got to take a look at that. Uh, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office is handling the investigation. They declined further comment. Last year, former uh, Columbus Police Sergeant Dean Worthington was sentenced to 90 days in jail, placed on probation for five years, and fined 5000 for having uh, child pornography on his personal cell phone. Warrington, a 22-year uh, veteran of the department, resigned in 2018 and pleaded guilty the next month. He will have to register as a sex offender. So he only did 90 days in jails. You know, probation. Unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Okay, don't forget HarleyLiberty.com for all your daily biker news. News that's not on this show whole bunch of stuff over there so get on over there man make sure you bookmark that site also hollywood and china now show get on over there get on over there get some support going man <laughs> anyway uh i i would have to say today's show had to do a lot about manipulation of the media how they get sheeple just to follow them everywhere they want them to go just like a little sheep Come on, sheep. They're the shepherds. They get you to go where they want you to go. And that is a big problem for this country. Especially when 
They are trying to claim an organization's white supremacist when it's led by a Latino. I still the hell do not know how that is happening. And they got African Americans in there. They got Chinese. They got everybody. But that's the way it goes, I guess, nowadays, man. Uh, the first story, all I can say is, you know, we sit there and bitch when they do this kind of crap, shutting things down, and next thing you know, walk right into this stuff. It wasn't the same event. It was a bike night, but it was in New Jersey, and that just don't, you know, bode well for clubs out there. They already got a freaking heart on for everybody. We did a three series on how they were going after the pagans in that crime commission report. I just have to say, man, if you want to handle business, make sure it's a way where people can't see the stuff, man. These open brawls are not helping anybody. It, it ain't. Uh, but again, that's your guys' club. That's your business. Do what you got to do. I'm just saying for the rest of the scene, it ain't bolding well for you because, you know, you get these event cancellations. And you know what? That's probably going to be their new trick. Start canceling stuff and claim it's a club's fault. You know, and again, people will be sheeple and believe that kind of crap. They will. They'll believe it. Trust me. You know, I never thought in my day, and I'm actually doing a, a video blog. You'll actually see it coming up this afternoon. Is is the motorcycle club scene dead? Very interesting question. And you know what it is? It came off of comments again, off because I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna address issues that are brought up in the comment section. Uh, that way, it's easier to answer a lot of the questions. But that point came from somebody on the comment section, and I answered it. No hold bars, man. Just like I always do. Don't hold back on them, baby. Nope, give it to them. Both barrels, I say. So that'd be coming up this afternoon. I'm figuring probably about one o'clock releasing that one. So you'll have some time to watch this uh, over on YouTube and Facebook. And then, of course, you can listen to everything going on over there. Uh, the video blogs are not released on the radio stuff. Only the shows are. But you can see it on YouTube and Facebook. Then you have uh, the Waterloo incident. Uh, it's probably one of them freaking uh, RC. Uh, not an RC, but uh, mixed clubs where they got the rockets and all that type of stuff. they out there doing that banging stuff. And then, of course, uh, Kingsman, man. You got to stay out of the damn news, man. You, just, you guys just had the feds take you apart last year uh, with a RICO deal, man. You might want to calm these guys down a little bit. That's all I'm saying on that one, man. Just a little bit. Then, of course, the wall of shame. Come on, is anybody even surprised anymore? That's why I did that whole episode yesterday's over on BitChute and uh, Spotify and all that. Dedicated the whole show to that. And plus my rebuttal to that one thing with the Panthers. But uh, did a whole show on it. Uh, some interesting information on that show. Like I said, there was an ex-police chief that came out and talked about why it's so hard to get rid of these cops. And you can guess, it's the police unions. Yep, police unions. So, go over there and take a uh, look at that. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the show. Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem will be back on Monday, man, during the weekend, though, man. Check out the video blogs over on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Get over to Instagram, man. Uh, I'm also putting stuff over there for all your enjoyment. Uh... With that, I'll talk to you guys later. You have a good one, man. Talk to you again soon.